Welcome back to the Ethan Claire Podcast Show. This is our third week in Mankato doing episodes. Last week we were on with Michael Semino. It was great to talk to him. We uh, we talked to him about mural art. We talked to him about UFOs. He has a really um, big interest in UFOs. And so we talked about aliens and we talked about one of the most famous UFO sightings of all time, which was actually in Minnesota. That was really cool. Did not know anything about that until we had Michael on. So that was really cool. And I'm, I'm just excited to be here and to have a great guest on tonight. I think we're going to learn a lot because none of us know too much about this topic at all. So it's going to be it's going to be really fun. But before we get into that, if you could just share, comment, retweet, like, subscribe, whatever you are watching it on or listening on. We are on YouTube. We are on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, whichever uh, platform you're watching it on. Just give us uh, your review. If it's a good or a bad review, we like to hear comments so we know how to make the show better. And we always appreciate people who are sending in topics or people they like to see on the show. So thanks, everyone, for tuning into this episode. And um, Pete here, back again, producing, and on the show, doing two roles at once. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, good to be back. Third week in a row. Third week in a row. And Colin, good to have you back on. You weren't on last week. But Not last week, but the week before. Week before. Thanks for having me again. Of course. Thank you for coming. And the guest of the week, Tom Urban, the mysterious. The mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I actually heard about Tom, um, to kind of get into it, I kind of heard about Tom from Sarah, who was our first guest on the show when we first moved to Mankato, and she gave me Mike and she gave me Tom. So two people that she gave me have been on the podcast now, so she must be doing something right. She's recommending people, and uh, it's just really good to have you, Tom. And let's just kind of dive right in and kind of give people a background. Um, are you from Mankato? and Mankato area. Mankato area. And how did you kind of get into whatever we're talking about tonight? Demon, demon hunting, is that what a, a good way to put it, or is there the, another... That's probably the most accurate way to put it. Demon hunting? That's what I've been doing the longest. <laughs> how did you kind of get into that? Because that just... Did someone just kind of wake up one morning like, I'm going to hunt demons? Or... <laughs> no, actually, it was more of a uh, self-preservation thing. Oh, really? We lived in a very haunted house, Damn. and... My room had a lot of traffic going through it, and they were just messing with me nonstop. Finally, I decided it's time to start fighting back. Dang. And so what kind of, I mean, to kind of let people know what we're talking about here, is this more paranormal, is this more religious, or is it kind of something in between? Or would you not even phrase it as it, either of those? I'm going to say it's more paranormal. I mean, you always have the religious undertones, but yeah. nobody has got it completely right. You know, it's kind of like the idea of, you know, my religion's right, my religion's right. Nobody is completely right. So this isn't like a Catholic exorcism. Oh, no, 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 no. This is very different than that. Well, think about it. I mean, before, you know, the Catholic Church and all that stuff, I mean, you had shamans, you had all kinds of people that did, you know, spiritual practices, exorcism, you know. What did they do before the Catholic Church? There obviously had to be some... True divine power or divine influence that they were calling down to uh, cast out these unclean spirits. And you're not going to people and performing getting rid of possession. That's not... Is that... Maybe that is? I I've done know. it five times. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it pretty rare to come across something like that? Or is it common? Uh, it depends what it is that we're dealing with. There's different types of demons or... There is an entire hierarchy. I mean, we have demons, you have you know, from your lowly soldier demons all the way to upper hierarchy. You have interdimensional beings. You have parasites. You have uh, things from a void. You have aliens. I mean, you name it, I have to deal with it one way or another. Really? Oh, yeah. So how, and you said there's a hierarchy. So how do you kind of rank, you know, how bad is it, how bad a demon is or the level of energy? Does this have to do with energy? I'm just trying to kind of wrap my head around what we're talking about here because I'm not too familiar with it. Uh, you've seen the movie Constantine, right? No, I haven't. Well, Constantine, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it was Keanu Reeves. That's like 20 years old by now, give or take. But <laughs> just The soldier demons in that, they were just, you know, your skinless gr or your uh, kind of wasted away grunts. Kind of like if you ever played Dark Souls, you know, when you have a hollowed, you know, NPC. Yeah, that kind of looks like beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's pretty much, you know, the bottom. You know, your cockroach demons, which kind of look like uh, those little grunts from Halo. The ones that scream oh, and run really? away. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And then the higher up you go, the harder it is to deal with, the stronger they are, and the more energy they're kicking out. Really? Oh, yeah. And so how do you have tools to measure the energy that these interdimensional demons or, or beings are putting out? I do it the old-fashioned way. I don't use an EMF detector. I don't use a yes-no talk box. I do it the old-fashioned way with your senses, a whole lot of intuition, and a lot of luck. 
Dang. And to kind of, before we get into too much any of this stuff, is this your full-time job or do you have something else you do? No, I do have a full-time job to pay the bills. And <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. Is there this any... This pays, though, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is there money in this at all or... I do work uh, certain events. I have my own business, which is Three Wolves House of Healing. Okay. And I do the uh, crystal and holistic fairs that come to town through Christie's Crystals. Oh, gotcha. So is that more? Is that just, this, so? This is more of a side job then. Yeah. Than anything. Yeah. Okay. And are you looking to get more into this, where this would become like a full time thing, or is it just kind of a hobby for you that can get some extra money in? The entire business, I would love to see it become. You know, instead of my side job, my real job. You know. Holistic healing, card reading, you know, the paranormal stuff. I would love to do that full time, but since, you know, I'm not a Winchester brother and I'm not on the WB, I can't just, you know, jump in the car and drive all around the country, you know, True. dealing with stuff. Yeah, huh. And you do tarot card readings and stuff, I'm assuming, then? I don't call it tarot. I do intuitive card readings. Tarot cards, typically you have your book and, you know, it's, okay, this card means this. Mm -hmm. If you flip it upside down, this card means this. Gotcha. I don't use any tarot cards. I've made two decks of my own. Otherwise, I've always used Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh, really? Yeah. And I put 10 cards down, flip them all at once, and then I just kind of tune in to their energy versus the energy in front of me. Huh. And I arrange the cards as I'm guided to, and then I relay the message. Oh, interesting. Because mm -hmm. we had a guy on the podcast, it was a couple episodes ago, um, from Wyndham. He actually did a tarot card reading on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was, I've never had one done before, so it was interesting to me to see how you lay the cards out. And he, too, said that he uses more intuition, more, he said, psychic energy between the two instead of going off of the book. He said anyone can really do it if they learn the cards. Mm -hmm. He said he uses more energy between what he can feel from the person and the card instead of going through the book. So I don't, I didn't know anything about tarot cards or if you said intuition cards. Yep. I didn't know much about it at all and how that even works, like how anybody could just become a psychic or, you know, I don't know if it's a special thing you got to have in your head, you know? I, I think there has to be a certain disposition. Oh, really? I mean, you can't just take, you know, Joe Schmo and give him a deck of cards and, you know, say, okay, go read these people and be accurate. Mm. I mean, you have to be open to it because, like, the extremely strict religious and devout usually struggle a lot with it just because they can't break out of that uh, shell. Huh. I mean, think about it. You know, re organized religion kind of puts you in a box. You know, this is where you're allowed to think. You're not allowed to question outside the box, you know. Hell is down, heaven is up, good, bad, blah, blah, blah. There is an entire world that exists outside that box that the Bible or whatever you follow doesn't touch. Hmm. Do you ever get um, criticism from religious people? I'm assuming... I've, got... been, I've been told I'm going to hell multiple really? times. Wow. And that's, I mean, that is really too bad because these people um, preach love and everything. And then to, for someone to go up to you and say, go to hell or you're going to hell, kind of like that disproves the whole thing about love or whatever yeah. you know so yeah that's too bad i i and the guy we had on from Wyndham, who's a psychic he gets messages all the time online and death threats yeah, he gets a lot of hate death threats like someone's actually threatening to kill somebody over this is mm -hmm. ridiculous even if you don't agree with them at all mm -hmm. there's no reason you'd ever ever should threaten somebody with their life or their family's life that's just crazy so for you if you've ever gone through anything like that you know that's just that's crazy well, I'm not exactly, shall we say, the type who's going to get be be easily pushed around. No. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Well, I, I and it's interesting because you brought a bunch of stuff here, and mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this, and our other guy we had on didn't have any of these tools either. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to go through and maybe introduce us to some of this stuff or talk about what you do with it. And for people who are listening, I'll kind of describe it too. Okay, we'll start with this. I'll call this Pandora's Box. Okay. Back up my mic. Pandora's box is for one thing, and that's for absorbing negative spectrum energy. Oh, gotcha. If you look inside the box, bottom of the box, that's dead sea salt and, uh, what was it? Regular sea salt. Both of them in there. I got magnets all the way around, so there's two on each face. I've got black tourmaline in the bottom. I've got a great big piece of obsidian in the bottom. It's wrapped in copper. Huh. Yeah, it is for absorbing negative energy, especially when I'm doing, you know, work at the expos. If I'm, you know, cutting cords, purging energies, you know, if there's just something bad in the area. What do you mean by cutting cords? For every person that you meet in your life, you form a cord. You have a cord with him, you have a cord with him. As oh, of today, you have a cord with me. Like a connection? Yep. Okay. Not every cord that you form over your life is for your benefit. 
Interesting. And over the course of time, you know, some of these become, you know, diseased. There's nothing good about them anymore. All they do is bring you down. Like a toxic mm. relationship. Yep. Think of it like a gangrenous appendage. Interesting. And I've learned how to isolate which cords those are. Like, I can see them as clear as I'm looking at you. Huh. At what point I use my obsidian knife. I hand bound this myself. I was going to ask you, yeah, dang. Yeah, it's kind of unbound a little bit, but... That is a scary looking it is. knife. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was a demon, I'm already afraid of that, but if I'm a human, I'm even more afraid of that. <laughs> no, the only thing this is ever used for is cutting cords. Oh, gotcha. Because the, uh, the fiery properties of obsidian, not only are you cutting, but you're searing those ends as well. Huh. So it's like um, taking a lighter to a knot, like a fraying, mm -hmm. fraying the edges. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And obsidian, I'm not. Is that a certain kind of rock or? That's uh, lava. Oh, it is lava. Otherwise known as dragon glass. Dang. Where do you get that at? Um, I actually got this at the powwow last year. There was a vendor there who had this very piece. Really. And I walked around all the vendor areas a couple times, mm -hmm. and then I came back, and I'm just staring at it. It's like. I wasn't looking for it, but I'm being guided that I need it. So wow, can I can I look at it? Yeah, or? you go right ahead. So you That's got it cool. last year. Have you had to use it all quite a bit? I use it with pretty much any uh, Take a look at healing it. session that I do. Okay. Because I think in order to heal, the first step is you need to purge what no longer serves you. Huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you would go to somebody with that, and they might tell you they have a toxic relationship, and you'd help them get rid of that. No, actually, it's preemptive to even beginning a healing session oh really yeah like it's the very first step wow that's cool and you, to kind of go back what is the box for again so you'd get all the negative energy out of the air yep and you know when i'm cutting cords you know the box is there to make sure that stuff is going to be dealt with huh when i'm doing energy purges that's there to deal with that is that kind of if you were to go to someone's house it was, they say it was haunted or whatever you bring mm -hmm. that with open it up and I, that would kind of is it kind of like saging or it's much more localized. Oh, gotcha. Like, if I'm in a room and I know, okay, my entity is in this room and I want to make sure that it's not, you know, ramping up, you know, sucking up negative energy, going all DBZ on me. Huh. That, you know, I can try to level the playing field. Whenever we have a major astrological event, you know, I'll take that or I'll leave it around, you know, where my kids are and I'll leave it open. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. What, and what does that have to, the astrological event would have to do something with releasing negative energy? Uh, remember the blood moon tetrad? Yep. The second blood moon happened in October of that year. I think it was 14 or 15. Yeah, 15. it was one, I think it was 15. The second blood moon of the tetrad actually opened a portal. And not just, you know, a regular Halloween portal. We're talking something that went deep. And the problem was... There was so much negative energy condensing on these points where you could actually form a portal that things were coming through a lot stronger than they should have been. A portal to hell? Call it whatever you want. If Think about it like Earth is our zero point. Yep. We have points going up. Let's say one to a hundred up. Yep. One to a hundred down. And the hundred at the bottom is the most evil? Yeah. Dang. And what was the portal at? Or was there not really a way to tell? I'm. I know where the portal is. I won't name the place specifically. It's oh. not too far from where we're at right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Kind of like there's a void not too far from here. Oh. Literally at the top of the hill, there is a void. It's there's just no energy that moves in there. Really? Everybody I've taken there, people who have never gone hunting before, who have never even entertained the idea of ghosts, I take them to this place. We drive through it, and they're all just like. Oh my god, my back hurts. That's crazy. The one time I went through there, maybe 20 feet on the property, and something punched me right in the heart. Really? Oh yeah. Dang. So these things are able to interact with you mm -hmm. physically. Oh yeah. Can you I've, can you fight back? <sighs> oh jeez. <laughs> oh. Anytime you're dealing with supernatural, especially anything dark. Iron is your first and best bet. Wow. That and this is, crazy. is a handmade iron machete. Holy so when God. you go on a property like that, you automatically have that out right away? No, I keep it tucked in the box. I'm not going to walk around <laughs> looking like, you know, I should be stalking teenagers at a camp, you know, <laughs> summer getaway. I suppose. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Friday the 13th over exactly. here. Exactly. Dang. You made that, though? Yeah. I went wow. and bought the iron, and I spent hours grinding and grinding and grinding. I was going to say, that thing's got to be pretty heavy. 
How long have you been using that <laughs> oh, for? son of a gun. For people who are listening, he's got a big old machete made out of iron here. This is a big mother. I wouldn't want to mess with that. I've been using that one for years. Years? I actually keep iron by my front door and iron by my back door. Really? Yeah. So it absorbs negative energy. And it'll stop it cold. Really? I did not know that. Yeah. Like, if you've ever watched Supernatural, there's a reason they're always using iron when they're attacking ghosts. Oh, gotcha. Huh. Hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, like you were talking about, you're at this property with these extremely negative energy. Something punches you. Mm -hmm. What's your first reaction? Because if something like that happened, I'd be out of there. <laughs> yeah. I, I followed the speed limit, and I got out as quickly as I could without <laughs> endangering anybody, but it was just like... <gasps> yeah, dang. It was like there's a very haunted property in the South Metro. And it's, you know, supposedly very Native American property. Like, oh, it's haunted. Yeah. We went out there once, and within five minutes, I felt like somebody had taken an arrow and shoved it right through my throat. That's crazy. How are How was energy able to take a physical form? That's something I've never been able to grasp. It's not so much that it takes a physical form, but it can interact with a person in a way that would respond like a physical form. Gotcha. Like, uh, take the alchemic properties of the duality of material mm. you know there's the physical there's the metaphysical for every you know like say this piece of wood it yep. has the physical and then there's an entire metaphysical if you have things that can pull in enough energy and actually focus it you, they can use the metaphysical properties of themselves to interact with your metaphysical properties and you can actually be affected really well, we had the the guy that was on before, Adrian Lee is his name. Um, he has actually has pictures of scratches and stuff from demons. Has Have that you ever, heard of him? Have you heard of Adrian Lee? I, when I was uh, looking you up after you sent me the invite, yeah, yeah. I watched both of his. What do you think about those? There's actually a cemetery south of town where that very thing happens. There's a oh, certain really? cem or a certain headstone. If you go messing around on it, he will scratch you. Really? I watched it happen firsthand. It, the scratch just comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, first they'll just, ah, my arm burns, and then they look, and they're like, oh, big scratch on me. Has that ever happened to you before? I've had much worse. Really? Much worse. What are we talking? I've been stabbed in the chest twice by Holy demons. Holy cow. I had my face stomped on to the point where my right eye was messed up for, like, two years. Holy cow. Like, the trauma actually had my right eye focusing about a second uh, behind my left eye oh my gosh and then i had my uh spine stomped on to the point where it sounded like a bag of kitty litter so you were on the ground when this happened and something oh, yeah. just started Dang. they just threw you on the ground or um no actually i was in bed when i got stomped on oh my gosh mm -hmm. they attacked you in your own house mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. wow well what i mean what would you do in that situation yeah what do you do you go for the toolbox or <laughs> This was before I had half my tools, but I just used what energy I could to try to push it back. Wow. Cause How, did you, this before you had anything set up? Any of the iron set up or anything like no, that? No, this was uh, 2012 when that happened. Really? Mm-hmm. How do you go to the doctor and explain <laughs> what happened? Unfortunately, you can't. Yeah. See, the thing with, you know, getting stabbed by a demon versus being stabbed by, you know, living, breathing person, mm -hmm. the pain is real. You can feel it, like, all the way through. It won't leave a mark. Really? Like, the first time it happened, it was this weird red-eyed shadow demon, and it had actually buried its tail right here in my chest. Really? And it held me there for half an hour. All I could do was sit in my chair. My right arm is completely limp. I can't move. And it's just pumping all these images in my head. Finally, oh my it left... And I just dropped. It was just like I was completely boned, and I just laid there on the ground. Was for that about at your house minutes. too? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. So you have you have the iron at the front door and back door, right? This was like oh uh, before this that. This was way before. But does that help stop them yeah. from coming in? Yeah. Well, it's supposed to, but can they still get around if they're strong enough? Would they still be able to? That's where you start getting into the different uh, levels of things. Because if you get, like, interdimensional beings... Yeah. Interdimensional beings don't behave the same way as demons. Oh, really? No, an interdimensional being... Think about it. You know, their world... They might never experience iron. They might never experience half of this stuff. So, you know, if they don't have it and they've never had to deal with it, it might never affect them. Huh. So what would you do in that case, then, if there's uh, the iron doesn't work... Is that when you turn to the tools, or... 
that's when I try to turn to the tools, try to make the area as positive as possible. It's kind of like with uh, doing an exorcism. Really what you're doing is you're making the host as incompatible with the energy inside as possible. And then the energy will end up leaving. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so you, what were you going to You ask? said you saw the red-eyed shadow demon, right? Mm-hmm. Do they all look like that? or No. That was a question I was going to wonder. Yeah. yeah. What do they look like? It depends what you're dealing with. Like, take shadow people. You know, you have your standard shadow people. You have the alleged top hat man, mm. which I'd never heard of before I talked to Sarah about it. You've got your red eyes, you know, you got shadow benders, you know, you got just a whole hierarchy, and that's just dealing Look with shadow things. And then for that, for those different levels, what are you able to see for some of these? Because when we talked to Adrian about it, he was saying some of them, you know, he wasn't able to see, some of them he was able to get a, a image of. What are the different levels where you'd be able to actually, like, oh, I saw that, that one, I, it was just kind of like a ghost almost. Shadow people are the easiest. And, you know, uh, when we had that uh, breach back in the second blood moon, you could actually start seeing the red eyes. It was like this red haze in the really? darkness, and it would move and it would watch you. That's crazy. So then what are some of the other things that you've seen, like the most dangerous <coughs> thing, uh, the most, maybe the highest level demon or whatever that you've seen? As far as I've seen, yeah. that would be a hellhound. Hellhound? As far as what I out, know yeah. is there. There's uh, the Bone Eaters of Mankato. The Bone Eaters of Mankato? Mm-hmm. What is that about? I actually had gone back and I looked up uh, lore for the area. Huh. And it led me to, you know, the typical Mankato lore page. And the last one, you know, they're like, yes, this tribe, it wasn't the Sioux tribe. But, like, this tribe says, you know, that when the settlers came, you know, uh, they misconstrued the word for Blue Earth. You know, it was like... <coughs> Sorry. No, you're good. <clears throat> what they thought was uh, Blue Earth actually translated to Bone Eater. Oh, and according really? to the story, there was actually subterranean demons below the ground that would eat people. Just bones and all. Wow. And is this something from e- is it Egyptian mythology? or? I'm not sure if it's Egyptian. It's entirely possible. But, uh, wow, because when you looked up Bone Eater here, you're getting only... Is it? Are you only getting this Egyptian... Yeah. Thing, Mytho- Pete, go go back to the Hellhound. So, have you seen like it looks like something that? like that? It's about the size of a small pony, and it's. Um, do you see more of the red eyes, or do you no, actually have seen the whole thing? Whole thing, really? Yeah, it's like an inky tar black dog. One of and, these look like it up here. Um. Top row, second from the right. This one right here. Yep. Dang, that's creepy. Just without the uh, the lamp on its tail. Yeah, <clears throat> dang. And they have those lines. On uh, no, the chest but no, and all it's that. it's all black. All black with dark red eyes or mm. bright. Yeah, it's usually pretty faded dark. Yeah. Dark and are red. these are these able to come into physical form and then go back into another? It's pseudo incorporeal. Like you can see them kind of prowl. Oh, gotcha. But. I haven't gone in to see, you know, exactly how far it can go. Like, I brought in two outsiders from the cities, and mm. we actually went to this place where it's at. Middle of the day, there's people everywhere, and we find this hole at the base of a tree. It's just like, okay, something's wrong here. Yeah. Look down the hole, and there's this swirling smoke down there. Next really? Thing, we hear a growl. It was like thunder, but under our feet. Oh, my gosh. So we looked at each other, and we're just like, okay, we're done. Yeah. Sorry. Dang. So it, have you ever had to fight one of the <laughs> hellhounds? Have you ever... No. Nothing? No. I. There's just some things you don't go after. You leave well enough alone on some things. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm sure some of these different levels are like... There's no way a human would be able to get rid of that. Maybe... Mm. I don't know if, there's, if it's something to do with the number of people you have. I don't know if you guys ever team up. Or how, how does that... I've, really I've got people I work with. Mm-hmm people that patch me up you know um that actually brings us to our next tool of mine i call this demon dust it's modified goofer dust which is voodoo cursing dust really but uh i more or less designed it and repurposed it where it only uh focuses on demons and negative spectrum stuff really doesn't work on interdimensional but yeah it'll clean a demon out pretty quick 
So you would throw that in the air, or how would you... You spread it around, you throw it in the air, you do whatever you need to do with it if you're getting yourself in trouble. Interesting. Have, have you ever had to use that? Oh, yeah. I use it often. You don't have very much there. Do you... This is just one bottle. I have uh, more bottles. So you don't... I'm guessing you don't need very much to get it to work. No. Actually, uh, you can cut it with regular table salt or sea salt to stretch it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Dang. <clears throat> and so this is another one of the energy absorbing... Uh, absorbing? No. This is more... Think of it like tear gas for demons. Oh, for really? Demons. Wow. Wow. And uh, what are some of the ingredients that go into that? Or is that something you can't really release? Uh, let me see. I got white sage, patchouli, dead sea salt, whorehound, uh, holly. Wow. Graveyard dirt. Purchased. Graveyard dirt. Purchased. I didn't dig it up myself. I don't need that kind <laughs> yeah. of bad karma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dang. Where do you where do you purchase graveyard dirt from? Uh, Magus up in the cities. Really? They have an entire herbal selection. So I would uh, get stuff from them. Do they go dig it up themselves? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> Dang. You can't get in trouble for that, can you? Technically, no, but why tempt fate? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So what are some of the other things here? You got a cross on a different looks of different It jewels. looks like a mini crowbar. <laughs> actually, mini crowbar? Actually, <laughs> black. It, oh. I would say it's comparable to, like, a rosary, except, oh. you know, I can put it right on my hand so I don't have to, you know have it all tangled up in my hands yep all the stones on here are high vibration so i have like magnetic hematite angelite uh lapis lazuli uh labradorite Dang. uh amethyst you know it's stuff to keep your vibration high and you made that or did you buy some? no i made it oh really mm -hmm. dang that's impressive hematite cross at the end Wow. It, it's good for keeping your vibration up and for protection. So you always wear that when you're going to... I always keep it with me. If I need it, I have it. Mm. What do you mean by vibration? Like literally vibration, like shaking the table? No, like uh, energy vibration. Like hmm. Nikola Tesla actually talked about, you know, the different vibration levels associated with the different emotions. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should look that up, Pete. I'm, that's an actual thing. He, I, I'm going to have to check that out. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Tesla. Vibration. And what are, what kind of goes into that? Because you can have bad vibrations, good vibrations, it kind of like that? If you think about it, like uh, the more positive vibrations or the more positive feelings will vibrate at much higher. Like enlightenment is at 1,000. Love is at like 632. <coughs> Dang, that's crazy you can rate that all. You see? Well, Tesla was a very brilliant man. Look up Tesla vibration scale, I'm assuming. Or Tesla emotional vibration. Emotional vibration. But here, is this it, one of these? Too emotional. We'll see if there's anything on that. This is interesting. I never never have heard about that. Seems like we've had a lot of people come on, though, and talk about different levels of energy and stuff. You might actually have to go off of images onto the main... Um, It'd be interesting to have Adrian here with Tom. Yeah, what Some... do you, do, you never have heard of Adrian before? Uh, No. Interesting. So what were your what do you think about some of the stuff he's saying? Do you agree with that, a lot of it or I agreed with a lot of it. But I mean he said himself he doesn't go looking for demons and you know Yeah. Where I more or less got thrown into it and I was trained to do this. Yeah. Huh. And you say trained, <laughs> is that something that was more self taught or did you have somebody you were under mentoring you? I had a mentor temporarily, right about two thousand, two thousand and one. Oh really? So he took what I knew and kind of polished it. And then he kind of disappeared and left me on my own. That it right there? Can you bring that up bigger, Pete? Otherwise, if you look up uh, sulfagio frequencies, uh, okay. it's all under there, too. Sulfagio? You might have to help him spell that. <laughs> I think it's S O L F A G G I O. Yeah. G G I O. Yep, sulfagio frequencies. There, let's check that out. There it is. Oh, yeah, there's Oh, dang. The... Can you. Right there. Love. So this it right here? Love, express, awake, reset. No, that doesn't actually have numbers. No, it. that's chakra alignment. Uh, back it up to the... Uh, back it up one more. Go back. Nope. Back. Right there. there. Yep, the main six sulfagial frequencies. Liberating There's guilt and fear. What? What's the HS? Hertz. HZ, hertz, yeah. Hertz. Yep. Returning to spir uh, spiritual order, 852 hertz. What does that mean? It's like uh, 
Think about kind of getting all your ducks back in a row. Like oh. if you're kind of going off on different and lower tangents. I mean, yeah, this is just from the Solfagio, you know, approach. But Tesla did a whole thing on it where he was talking about the different vibration associated with the motion. Interesting. Mm. And are there? Is, does this have all the levels on it, or is there even lower? Uh, there's lower and there's higher. Like I've found, like what was it, over eleven thousand on. Uh, oh jeez. YouTube. <laughs> That thing's loud. 11,000? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, the higher you go, it'll actually make, like, your skull uh, vibrate. Really? Mm. Have you ever had that happen to you? Yeah, it was actually pretty cool. How do you do that? You just, you find the frequencies and you put it on your YouTube and you listen to it. And, and it'll make you vibrate. It'll make your head tingle. Can we put, look that up? Is that something you could do if we just get the YouTube video? Yeah. No way. That'd be something like, uh, the viewers <laughs> chat, no, Jack was talking about. Jack. You know, <coughs> That you had on from... Oh, yeah, down. yeah. He was talking about doing that. What do we got to look up for that? It'd be like sulfagio frequencies. Remember how to spell that, Pete? <laughs> we need the we need the head vibration. It's That's like SOL. Well. That's crazy. I wonder if... Yeah, if everyone... Yeah, F-E-G-G-I-O, I think. F-E. It's there. right there. Top one. Top, yeah. Oh, they have, they have sleep and healing, too. Which one do we need here for the... Uh, scroll down. 432. So do you listen to these often? Uh, usually if I'm having trouble sleeping, I'll mess with them. Or if I'm trying to medita uh, meditate, I'll listen to them. Do you meditate every week at a certain time? or No. No. Because uh, no. we had a guy on who was saying that there's a every group of Saturday people... Night, right? Every Saturday night, yeah. they all tune in at the same time. And uh, he had a, p a playlist on there. I'm going to have to check that out, too. Um, let's see. Remove toxins and negativity. Is there a certain... Here, just play one so we can there, hear what it sounds is like. Is there a uh, certain hertz we have to get to? Uh, do the 936 one. Or 963. 963. It's the bottom one right now. All right. Everyone, yeah. everyone listen up. Gonna probably have an Our advertisement. potential is yep. way up here, and we are operating way down here. We are not going to survive... All right, here we go. Oh, of course, it's got to load. Here, hit pause quick. Nine hours long. <laughs> that's yep. a whole night's sleep. People mm -hmm. listen to this to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. And it just, it calms you, or what is it? What's kind of the whole... It, it can calm you, you know, it can help kind of guide your mind the way you need it to go. Really? Huh. I, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. I feel like i got to do more research. Yeah, there's like whole like therapies where you're just listening to these and, you know, the different frequencies to do different things to you. Really? Well, maybe make it small screen, Pete. Then it won't take so long to play. And then just try playing it. Let's see if we can hear something here. It might just be my headphones, but I feel like my it is kind of vibrating. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Do yeah. you, are you picking that up too, Pete? No. I could see how if you were like sleeping, listening to this, how it could kind of like I don't know mess with your head. Yeah, positive. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of like the same thing what people um, have like a fan running at night. That might be a certain level of hertz or whatever. Mm -hmm. I never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. You were the one that said you need a fan to sleep. Oh yeah. Not a fan. It sounds like an airplane. <laughs> yeah, he's got a loud fan. You might need 930 hertz or something. Two grand hertz to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that kind of the same thing, though? People like a noise, an ambient noise mm -hmm. to fall asleep? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I should look into that if a fan has a certain level of hertz to where you'd actually use that. Yeah, but, I mean, that's more of a mechanical sound. So, I mean, it's not going to be like a healing tone like this. That's what I was wondering. You know what that sound is? Is that a certain uh, instrument? 
Because I've seen some weird do, like horns. the singing bowls a lot with that. Yeah, that's maybe what it is. Mm -hmm. Huh. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. When we come back, we're going to get more into this, talk about what the weapons are used for and how you fight back. Thank you for tuning into the Ethan Claire Podcast Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Ethan Claire Podcast Show. We've been talking during the little break here, and we started getting into a story, and I'm like, we got to get the cameras rolling because this is a good story. Tom was telling us about... When you were living at your, is it your old house now? Current house. Current house. That you had a visitor in the middle of the night come to you. And I'll just let you pick up the story because this is crazy. Uh, this was crazy. This was the night of the second blood moon. Dang. So I had the uh, the iron at the doors. Yep. And, you know, I had everything ready because it's just like, okay, astrological event never ends well. No. And I had mentioned earlier how it opened a portal, but it opened a deep portal. I wake up some point in the middle of the night and all of a sudden I hear this kind of voice you know like your intuition your inner voice your whatever you want to call it yeah it says whatever you do do not open your eyes dang it's just like okay next thing I know I hear something moving it's just like <coughs> oh crap and it's literally from me to the door behind you away like it's walking right around the foot of my bed it's walking back and forth across my room Jeez. Finally, I get to a point where it's just like, okay, you can open your eyes for a fraction of a second, look, but don't re or don't react. Yeah. I open my eyes and I see this hooded figure, big red, like flowing cloak. How from don't you not like do anything? You know what I mean? Like, my heart was pumping. I literally had the iron machete next to me, like from me to you on the floor away, but. There's no way I could have grabbed that quick enough. Dang. Like, anything I could have done would have taken too long for where I was in relation to where that thing was. I laid there for at least two hours listening to this thing walking back and forth. <sighs> you know, I can hear it breathing as it's walking. Dang. What, what was it trying to do? Just to intimidate you, or...? I don't know what it was trying to do, but... I'm just really glad I've got good bladder control because <laughs> that was probably one of the more terrifying moments of my life. Did it just stop then after two hours? Or? It just disappeared. God, really? it's crazy. And I'm trying to figure out how do you separate an instance like this where you, I mean, it's a demon, but if this happened to me, I'm thinking there's somebody in my room, mm -hmm. like an actual person. How did you know this was a demon? Well, I remember I always said I was trained. Oh, yeah. I was trained to pick up on those frequencies. Like I said, I don't use EMF meters. You know, I use my senses. Mm. Yeah, I can pick up on, like, if there's an entity. Yeah. Like, if I walked into this room, let's say you had a demon in your closet. As soon as I walked into the room, I would stiffen up because it's just like, oh, you got something. Nothing in there. We're good. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, if we have any negative, any... Uh, yeah, let's get those out. Do you ever have to go, do people ever hire you to go to their houses before they move in and check for stuff like that? Um, I actually have a friend who lives out in Winona, and she keeps sending me pictures because they're in the market for a new house. And she's like, okay, look through these pictures and tell me what you see. Okay, you got one in 27, 29, doot, 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 doot. and I'll just go through the pictures. It's like, you got one here, 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 and here. You can tell from a picture. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. You don't have to be at the location. And you're talking about you have a demon in this picture. Or some kind of... Or um, When I lived in one of the apartments, like right after I graduated uh, college... Yeah. Uh. There was a lot of haunting going on there. Like, it was, you didn't sleep. You didn't invite people over because, I mean, it was just that bad. Wow. Before I left, I went from room to room and I took pictures in the closet. Now, the closet door is wide open. All the clothes are on the racks. And you're looking and all of a sudden you see, like, this slight discoloration. And you look and you see this big smiling face. Big hollow eyes. Jeez. It was just there just staring, kind of like, ha-ha, there's nothing you can do. Can everybody see this or just you? No, you. anybody could have seen that one. That one was clear as day. You don't have these you, pictures, do you? I'd love I to see do, them. I do, but I don't know where they went. I've oh. moved like eight times since then. And Dang, I'd love to see those Did pictures. you take the picture and notice it? or No, I, I just took the picture. Oh, you didn't notice some, it right away? Uh, as soon as we got the pictures back, I'm flipping through them. It's just like... Not when you were there, though. You didn't. No, see you it. didn't see it in no, person. No, there was like shadow things that were walking back and forth in that closet. Wow, that's crazy. And to kind of get into the next part of it, which is 
fighting back mm. because I've, I've I've heard a lot of different paranormal people talk, but no one has ever talked about how they actually fight these things. So mm-hmm. I'm really interested hearing what the tools are. How do you actually fight something that, you know, th- these demonic things? Like, that's crazy to me, you know? Mm-hmm. How, what Can you kind of explain how that works? Well, there's really no easy answer to this. So. <laughs> well, like I said, first step, you know, we got salt. Yep. You know, we got our demon dust. We've got our iron. Yep. You know, we've got, you know, our little rosary bracelet to kind of keep things back. Yep. I have this. It's called Keep Out Spray. My best friend Amy made this for me. It's made with uh, purified water and uh, like five different essential oils. Really? I can't name them off because that would be kind of a trademark violation. Yeah. But, yeah, they're really good. I mean. Smells good, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely tell there's essential oils in there. Oh, yeah. Dang. Yeah, that's good for, you know, starting to shake a room loose. You know, that's good for dealing with hitchhikers. I might just use that to keep my room smelling good. (laughs) Hitchhikers, would that be a spirit or a demon that pins onto you and follows you home? Yep. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And so you'd spray that on yourself around a room or just kind of... I anywhere. keep it on... I put it spray it on myself. Or oh, really? I took uh, a group out a couple weeks ago, and I sprayed them before I even let them back in the car. Oh, re- really? So when you take these groups out, where do you usually go? I take them to some of the safe spots. Okay. Because I know where the really bad spots are. I know where the safe spots are. Yeah. Yeah, one of the safe spots is like south of Mankato. Okay. And that's the one where, you know, we got the, the scratcher. That's but, a safe spot? <laughs> compared to some of the other spots, yes. Dang. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. So what would you do then? After you've sprayed the stuff, you've kind of got it all set up, what about an actual attack on these guys? Because I see you got like a sword or something back there, that uh, dagger. I've actually had this since like early 2000s. It Dang. was one of those where I saw it and it's was like, buy it. Buy it right now. Damn. I have taken this with me to every, you know, demonic event where i could take it yeah and yeah it has never let me down i mean it's just a surgical steel blade really there's just something about it where every time i've taken it with me you know it's been the defense that i've needed that's crazy can you pull it out of there holy cow <laughs> that thing's wild. i don't want to mess with that no i don't care who you are and i don't care who you are you couldn't uh you couldn't <laughs> come up with a better sound effect than just that i mean wow. that's People pay money for sound effects like oh, that. Yeah. Get that in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like kill the demon, that's what I was getting to. Yeah, like, like you pull that thing out, and I God, that thing, that thing, you just start like. <laughs> well, here's where it's going to start getting interesting. Okay, perfect. Now I want you to think about your preconceived notion of magic. What is magic to you? Like a magician, or let, let, let's say like actual like witches and magic, like the actual okay. application. What does that mean to you? Like witchcraft and stuff, mm-hmm. maybe more like a like a satanic kind of thing to me. When I think of witchcraft, I mm. think of more satanic stuff. Okay, but like the actual magic is actually drawing in and the application of energy by way of the will. Mm. Magic in and of itself is typically more ceremonial. Gotcha. What I learned was that every human carries a charge. I think it's about eleven hertz that each human body can produce. Oh, really? You can learn ways to become a conduit to draw down and draw in higher energies or to raise your energy level. Huh. And then you can actually learn to control these different energies and use them to fight back. Really? I mean, just saying it's magic is the easiest, you know, way to even begin to explain it. But it's literally the application of the energy that I can draw in from different places. That you can use to defend myself or fight back. So then when would you use some of these other tools to to actually fight physically? (laughs) Well, this tool isn't even for fighting. I actually call this one the hex breaker. Dang. Palo Santo, whole lot of copper wire, and selenite. Selenite? And you actually use this to clear oral fields. You know, like if he's got a dirty aura, it would go like that. And we use that combination to actually start clearing out the oral field. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. You feel anything, Calm? I'm not feeling anything. (laughs) He must be clean. (laughs) (laughs) This house is clear. (laughs) (laughs) Is that a slingshot, or what is this about? Uh, No, actually, I call it my crystal tattoo gun. (laughs) 
<laughs> it does kind of look like a tattoo gun, yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> no, actually, uh, for this, we have to get into a theory that I had developed. Oh, now, really? The theory, developed the, theory? I, the, the theory I developed is called dead, dead energy poisoning. Huh. You know, I want you to think, energy never really breaks down. You can't destroy energy. Mm-hmm. Now, it, we've all been somewhere where there's been a fight. You know, you walk into a bar, you walk in a room, there's been a nasty fight. There's that heaviness. Yeah. Yep. Just that really nasty feeling. You could tell something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, it almost behaves sentient when you have that kind of an energy there. So what it does is you have that negative energy, which is infecting people. Everybody in the room is starting to feel it. Oh. The longer they're exposed the more it's infecting them and the more they're feeding it back. Really? You feed it back, you're making it stronger. Now, all of this energy, it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything, but it stays with you. It becomes kind of like a, a residue that builds up inside you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like the more you have this energy condensing inside you, it's kind of like when your uh, motor oil starts getting a little funky where you're not going to run as good. Oh, gotcha. And then the higher the concentration, the more physical symptoms or mental symptoms are going to start uh, developing. Mm. So what I found is there's actually ways to purge this energy. So, you know, this is an onyx point. Dang. And what you use, or what I do is actually use this, make an energy incision from collarbone to navel, armpit to armpit. And we start drawing out all that dead energy. And we feed it right to Pandora's box. You don't actually cut somebody. No. No. It's it's energy. Oh, gotcha. So it, it, we go back to the, you know, duality of material. Mm. We're doing energy surgery, which is, you know, a whole part of energy healing. You know, application of external energy to try to uh, change uh, the person. Mm. So it's the metaphysical, <clears throat> not the actual physical. You don't mm. actually have to cut somebody. No. It's just the act and the energy coming from... The onyx point is mm-hmm. that what you called it? The onyx point. That's yep. really interesting. That is interesting. And mm-hmm. you you created this and you created the theory behind that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And is that something that you need to publish or that other people would use, or something that you just kind of trademarked it's yourself? Just, it's just kind of my own thing. Huh. I just I throw it out there periodically to try to explain it when I'm you know dealing with clients. Yeah. So yeah, we start with this, you know, clear out that energy. Yep. We switch over to the obsidian blade, start cutting cords. Yep. Like I said, the first thing before you're going to heal is you have to clear out all that bad stuff. Yeah. Dang. So let's say worst case scenario, this is an actual, you know, high, high level, um, inner, what do you call inner, uh, inner being or whatever it was, inner dimensional being Mm -hmm. or a demon. You have to bring out the, that, um, blade, whatever. Mm -hmm. What would you do then with that? The last time I had to really take on a demon, it was a friend of mine who had actually gotten possessed. Oh, dang. So what I did is I had the person, you know, in my garage. There's plenty of room. Yep. So then what I did was I took the point of the blade and I drew a circle on the concrete around her. I took the blade. I made a second circle around her. (coughs) And then I actually had a conversation with the thing that was latched onto her. As I was trying to push energy into her. Dang. And then, you know, keeping that iron really close. Yeah. Yeah, it got pretty snide and it got pretty angry, but finally it's just like, fine, I'm getting bored with you anyway. And Is it, it like a deep voice, like your typical, like you see in movies? It was deeper than the person, but, you know, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like the exorcist. It wasn't that. So they were speaking through <laughs> your friend then? Mm-hmm. That, see, that's creepy stuff. <laughs> that's creepy stuff. All, but, you got a friend that's a girl and she's deep voiced is that what it was it was a girl it was a lady it was a female wow and they just start talking in a voice that's not their own yeah wow that's just spooky stuff and you said it got bored and it left it got mad because it was trying to you know say no this person is mine this person is mine and i wasn't having it just like no you're you're leaving right now Wow. So you would actually never use that to actually, like, people might think you might, like, stab it and stuff like that. It's more the things that you're doing with it. Like, you drew Mm -hmm. the circle around, Mm -hmm. and then you'd use the iron iron, uh, machete. Mm -hmm. That's more because the iron energy, it's not because you need to actually... Uh, No, I'm not actually aiming for piercing. That's what I was wondering. Would would there ever be uh, a case where you'd have to do that? If you're dealing with, like, different cryptids... You would? 
Yeah, because, I mean, if you're dealing with a cryptid, we're talking about something that's actually a completely fully manifested creature. Really? Yeah. You've seen that before? I haven't seen it personally, but I actually, uh, for my next show that I'm going to do with Sarah, I'm uh, going to do an entire show with her based on the idea that the cryptids of today are actually a continuation of the Nephilim DNA. Nephilim? Uh, Genesis 6. <coughs> uh the sons of God saw the daughters of man, and they were beautiful, and they took them as wives and had many children. Mm. The byproduct of angel and human was the Nephilim. Really? Now, if you go into the whole, you know, Mandela effect, it originally said, you know, that they were horrible giants that ruled the world. Then the Mandela effect changed it, but... <sighs> so what would they be in today's world, a Nephilim? Um, it would be... It would be a giant. Like, if you actually go and look at, like, uh, what is it? Google it, where it's like the giant skeletons. Like, the Smithsonian's actually found giant skeletons oh, around really? the world. Wow. Look and, up, yeah, look up Smithsonian giant skeletons. Like, we're talking, you know, human esque skeletons, you know, 20, 30 feet tall. <clears throat> there a video there? Yeah, go back, Pete. Go back. Check out that video right there. You know, it's like if you yeah. look at the ancient Egyptian, you know, hieroglyphs where you have like the pharaoh and the pharaoh is like six times bigger than the rest of the people. Yeah. That might have not just been symbolic. Really? I didn't even think of that. That is crazy. Check out this video. Mind boggler. Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do. Kill. Here, skip into it a little bit. Killed by Brazier. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Maybe this will be good. According to the report, a ruling by the Turn US up a Supreme bit. Court is what forced the world's largest museum to release classified documents from its early 19th century archives. Oh, they were classified. Going far in proving wow. the allegations. Indeed, a surprising number of reports of giant skeletons do exist in old newspapers. All the same, you might want to take these claims with a bag of salt. <coughs> Number seven, <laughs> human skulls with horns. No way. A creepy human skull with horns was claimed to have been found along multiple horned skulls and seven feet skeletons to go with some of them. Holy. The obviously human remains were allegedly excavated from an ancient burial mound near Sayre, Pennsylvania in the 1880s. The horns were about five centimeters, Holy two cow. inches in length. And what would you say that is? And extended Tom. from just above the eyebrows. Is that enough The or? excavation was supposedly done by a trusted no, group of investors. The Nephilim, including Dr. G. The Nephilim themselves were giants. You know, they were like giant humans. Like, think of Attack on Titan, except they didn't look like they were completely mentally deficient. <laughs> yeah. If you read the Book of Enoch, the Nephilim did three things. They killed, they bred, and they ate. Like, they were completely cannibalistic. Really? But it actually said that the genetics of a Nephilim, they could breed with whatever they got their hands on. Really? Now, think about the entire span of human history. How many half-animal hybrid gods... Do we have across the world ancient egyptians yeah. babylonians now if you actually read the book of enoch to the end well i don't know if it's all the way to the end but it says it was only the nephilim that had killed each other off so that would have been that original breeding so are they if they've killed each other off are they still around or how did they or is that just a myth that they're well that's what the book of enoch says but what i'm saying is that genetic code for mutation would have continued on with their line. Oh. So realistically, we still have Nephilim DNA circulating either active or passive. Wow. So, I mean, we could have, you know, all these cryptids that actually are the byproduct of Nephilim DNA, you know, extremely watered down from the original strain, but, you know, but it's, it's still, the same. still this open-ended DNA that's extremely, you know, compatible with mutation. And that would be in the form of a human. A human, you know, the Jersey Devil. Really? I mean, so that would be something that you'd actually physically have to kill. Oh yeah. And will you get in trouble for something like that? I mean, <laughs> it's coming right for us. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. You know, are the police gonna come and help you out, or is this something where I mean, I can't even wrap my mind around killing. I I don't even. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. I mean, <laughs> a gun, not that thing. I mean, that would probably work, but yeah. I mean, if you got the Jersey Devil, which is like half horse, half like 
three different things. <laughs> I mean, if the police show up and you've got this giant abomination laying on the ground in front of you, I don't think they're going to arrest you for that. What the heck happened to you? What? <laughs> Your headphones broke? Yeah. Oh, my God. I think the demon ripped them off. I was going to say, you're getting attacked over there. Um, but, what? yeah. Is that Jersey Devil, is that based out of New Jersey? Yep. Yep. It's kind of like Bigfoot, right? It's yep. the same. Well, uh, Minnesota, one of their... Hey, uh, up with a Jersey Devil. I one of their uh, cryptids are the Wendigo. Oh, that's the Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, the horned... Is that the horned things? Um... It depends which version of the story you hear. Oh, there's different. Yeah, because the one I had looked up, you know, they just talked about these giant beings. Damn, look at that thing. Is that it? That's a Jersey Devil. Wow. That's crazy. Huh. What were you saying, though? There's different... Um... The, there's different versions of the Wendigo. Like, there's ones where they're, like, these giant beings. It's, it was... I don't remember even where I found it after all this time, but they're like, yes, and they have like a star on their head, and they usually wear these robes, and it's like, that's uh, a bit of a stretch. That's a creepy looking. That's like more a... like a skinwalker, but yeah. Uh, the other, yeah, that would be kind of one of the versions. Flesh Eater of the Forest. That that's looks like a deer gun, right? Yeah, I got some antlers on there. Yeah. Bambi gun one. <laughs> <laughs> new, new version of the movie. Rated hey, R. Hey, look at this thing. That's like some Pokemon thing. Oh, that says Wendigo. Come on. Looks but, like a centipede. Uh, the uh, the picture top left right now. Right. Yep, that yeah. one right there. Oh, okay. Now. That's creepy. Here's where it gets interesting because there's actually the talk of Wendigo sickness. Some human gets attacked by Wendigo. They're actually going to start going through a change. Like think of like, really? oh, think of the vampire and werewolf lore that they very slowly change. Yeah. Yeah. Humans can turn Wendigo. Really? And Has it when, happened before? According to the lore, yes. Really? I'm not really looking forward to going up and looking, but... No. But, yeah, Damn. they're saying humans can turn Wendigo, and they will go completely feral and completely cannibalistic. Wow. That's crazy. I, I mean, I've heard about the <laughs> Wendigo. Not... I've heard about the Wendigo before, because when we did the Bigfoot episode, we were looking up all the different creatures of every state that are like the myths that people have, and the Wendigo is Minnesota's. Mm -hmm. Every state has some form, like the Chupacabra and everything. Are those all, would you consider nef Nephilim, or? The, they, I would uh, consider it cryptid. 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 Okay. You know, cryptozoology. Oh, okay. I have heard that before. Yeah. But to actually say that they're Nephilim, I mean, that's purely speculation. Yeah. Because that's really the only point where we have, you know, written proof saying that, yes, there is this, you know, race that has bred and it can actually crossbreed, you know. Dang, yeah. And what book were you saying? You kept bringing up a book. Uh, book of Enoch. Enoch. What mm -hmm. is that? I've never heard of that before. It's uh, one of the uh, books Enoch. of the Bible that didn't quite make it. E-N-O-C-H. E-N-O-C-H. Enoch. Huh. It actually kind of fills in the gaps in uh, early Genesis. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Where can you... I've never heard of that before, actually. Barnes & Noble. Oh, Barnes thanks. And okay, Noble, it's a separate it. book. They don't yeah. actually add it into the Bible. It's just a separate book. It's that, a separate book. Huh. And it was actually the same... Found about the same time in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Really? Why don't they include that in the in the Bible, then? <laughs> I'm sure it didn't quite fit the uh, political agenda of Constantine at the time. That's interesting. Wow. Here's crypto cryptozoology. Uh, what the heck is that thing? I don't know. I can't read that language. Definitely in English. <laughs> Not Dang. Well, to kind of go back um, a little bit more here, what are some of the other things that you have with you? Because you said you, most of your work is in that toolbox. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of all your main stuff? I see you got a lot of stuff in there. I got a rain stick. I got a whole bunch of stones. I got my different card decks in here. Oh, you want to bring one of those out? I'd be interested to see one of your intuition decks, actually. Just to kind of... Because we've seen Adrian's uh, tarot cards. Yeah, this is actually the first deck that I had made. I think the other one is still at home, but... Wow. Yeah, I was guided as to what to put down and... That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Fire, movement, perspective. Wow. That's super cool if you want to look at them, Pete. That's awesome. And you said it's it's different than tarot cards. Mm -hmm. It's not by the book. There is no book. It's just, it's in, you created them. Uh, the way I try to explain it is, <clears throat> you know, you can get all the books you want. You can get all the tarot cards you want. If they don't speak to you, 
all you're doing is, you know, memorizing facts and reciting, you know, whatever it was you read in the book. It's not as personal as if you were to create something like that. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. Yeah, because one card can mean 10 different things to 10 different people. You know, it's true. all in how I'm guided to interpret. Wow. And when we were kind of talking on the break, um, to even go farther back, you were saying that you actually went to school for culinary arts, right? Mm-hmm. Or for culinary. Yep. So you're a cook. Yep. You're a chef. What are some of the things, we talked about this, but not on camera, what are some of the things that you make, kind of, or your specialty? Because you were kind of explaining it to me. <laughs> um, I guess one of my favorites is kind of a Thai chicken soup. Dang. You know, coconut curry, you know, lots of cilantro, garlic, hot peppers. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So you're hunting demons at night and you're cooking during the day. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, um, doing something totally different, you said you're an engineer, right? Uh, no, I'm a quality inspector. Quality inspector mm-hmm. at uh, an engineering place. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. So you got in all kinds of different directions He's here. all over the place. Multi-talented. Mm-hmm. God, I can't look at you straight with those headphones broken <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Well, that's actually, I mean, this has been this has been cool to go through some of this stuff. To kind of wrap it up, when you are completely done with one of these entities or whatever, mm-hmm. is there something that you kind of do to finish it off? Because you started off, you said, with uh, the, um, what do you call that? Demon dust. Demon dust. dust. Demon dust. Is there kind of a something you use to finish it off when they leave to make sure they don't come back? Uh, salt and iron. Oh, the iron. Salt okay. every door, salt every window, salt every vent. Really, vent. You know, salt around, salt around your toilet, salt around your sink really? bases, salt around every drain. So they can come in through plumbing. Mm-hmm. Wow. And the craziest thing to me is, you're a guy that fights these things, but you told us multiple stories about how they attacked you in your own house. Mm-hmm. They must leech onto you and know where you are to follow you back to attack you. I stand out like a sore thumb from their perspective. Really? Yeah. Dang. Like, like, think about it, you know, you have your cookie cutter people, you know, they're all going to be at like 11 hertz or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, your shades of gray, you're going to have your people who are going to be a lot darker, you're going to have your people that are going to be a lot lighter, you know, just their energy patterns. But you think they'd be afraid of you because do they know that you have this stuff? Are they able to sense it? There are a lot that will take off when I get to work a job. But there's always some that think they're going to try to be tough or make a name. Yeah, because that was one of the things Adrian told us was when he, bef- the things know that he's coming before mm-hmm. he even gets there. Mm-hmm. They might leave, and he said 90% of the time there's nothing there when he gets there because they heard he was coming. And he said there's even been cases where, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, where they've tried to get him not to get there. Like they've given him a flat tire. Mm-hmm. You've ever had any experiences like that? I've had it where all of a sudden the person, you know, I get a hold of them, they're kind of starting to get really wishy-washy, or all of a sudden I'm going to do a job, and it's just like, do I really want to do this? I kind of want to go over here and do this. I kind of want to do this. And it's just like, no, focus, focus. So it's almost as if they're messing with your mm-hmm. um, mental mm-hmm. your mental health or your, your ability to want to do things? It, it's more like they're, they're trying to get, keep you from doing it. That's crazy. That they would know that you're going, oh, here comes Tom, let's mess with him or whatever, mm-hmm. so that he wouldn't be able to do something. That's crazy to me. That do people call you in the middle of the night then for, like, a emergency situations then? Or? I actually did have a call in the middle of the night once. It wasn't a demon. It was a friend of mine whose husband had gotten shot in the head with a nail gun. Oh, my gosh. She's like... I don't know what you can do, but I know you can do something. Please do whatever it is you can do. So what'd you do? I pulled an all-nighter focusing my energy on working on him. Oh, my gosh. It Kind of like whenever we have, like, a blood moon, an eclipse, you know, any kind of a major astrological event, I'm typically pulling an all-nighter just in wow. case something is prowling. So were you able to heal him then? Of Yep. Really? I, I did what I could to help him along, and he made a full recovery. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So you are on, this is a good way to end it because people that want to use their services or I'm sure there's people listening who have something that might be bothering them or whatever. Mm-hmm. You said there's a way to contact you. You named a company. Three it, Wolves House of Healing. Three Wolves House of Healing. And Spread is there, it all out or spell it all out. Three Wolves House of Healing. Okay. So it's not the number three. It's no. actually Okay. No, nope, it's all that, written out. Is it, that a website? It's on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Yep. You go through Facebook and you find my uh, page. Why don't you pull it up yeah, quick for people, up, yeah. just so people know exactly where to go. Three Wolves House of Healing. And then any Christie's Crystals events that are done in Mankato, I'm at those. And you mentioned that. Is that a separate business? Uh, 
Christy has a her own crystal business. Oh, gotcha. And she does it out of her house right now. Oh, gotcha. And she does like the different psychic uh, fairs. Oh, okay. And are you are you able to travel? Do you travel quite a ways to go to people? Or are you just around the Mankato area? Uh, I have friends that are all the way up in the cities that I've gone to help. Oh, really? Dang. Well, like, yep, there, that's me. All right, so check this out. Three Wolves House of Healing on Facebook. Five out of five reviews. We'll have to go give them a good review here. <laughs> this has been awesome. Psychic readings, guided card readings, energy healing, paranormal specialist. No demon hunter on there, though. Well... <laughs> You don't want to scare them Scare off. people. You exactly. say paranormal specialist, and they find that a little easier to swallow. Yeah, true, but true. Notice it says specialist, not expert. I will never use the word expert because the field is always changing. Always evolving. And well, dang, yeah. That's awesome. Well, this is really cool. Make sure you guys check out Tom. This has been an awesome episode. I know we hardly got into anything. Barely scratched the surface, so that just means we're going to have to have you. Got to get yep. Tom back on here, and we can dive more into stuff. And it'd be awesome if you have pictures or video or anything. I'll see what I can find. Because it, I'm really interested, and we just, like I said, barely got into any of this stuff. I got stuff written down. I got to look up, research, and I know when we come back, I'll be a little bit more educated, but I don't think I'm ever going <laughs> to get into it as much as that. It's crazy stuff, and it's there's a lot to know. And like you said, it's always changing. Mm-hmm. So you might think you got it all, and then, all, you know, there you go. There's something something else, new. Something new. So it's been awesome having you, Tom. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank really you. appreciate yeah, thank it. You, Tom. Um, Pete? As always, thank you for producing and ho- being a side host. Colin, thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Now we got to get new headphones because of you. Before we go. They're, they're mine anyway. They it's are me. your headphones, aren't they? Have to buy you a new pair. Get yeah. some more tape on there. There we go. Before we leave, we got to announce the winner of the prize. We said we were giving away one more limited edition, the city poster. We did say that last week, didn't we? Uh, I'm pretty sure. That, yeah, that's what it was. I think we said that. Pete doesn't remember. I wasn't here, but I watched <laughs> Yeah. Kathleen Brandt is the winner of the The City poster. So congratulations, Kathleen, for winning. We'll get you that poster. And all you got to do to enter the drawing, we always give away something every week. All you got to do to enter the uh, drawing is share, comment, retweet, subscribe. Give us a positive or bad rating on iTunes if you didn't like the show for some reason. But hopefully you did. And we will enter your name into a drawing. Every week we give away something, and that's all you got to do. So next week, I'm not sure what we'll give away, but it'll be something good. So make sure you go out there and do all those things I mentioned. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a great episode with Tom. We'll be back next week. As always, thank you so much for watching. This is the Eva Claire Podcast Show.